Hey, Terry, good morning. Uh, sorry, everybody, all of our fans out there that are in Life After California world, we apologize. We had a few technical difficulties, but I am super, super excited for this one. I've been waiting a while. I met Haley was one of the first realtors that I met when I started to team up with Terry. Haley Van Edom, right? Am I saying it right? Ben. Yeah, Van, Van Edom. Van Edom. Van Edom. And we got Terry, of course, down there in sunny Florida. But Haley... It's so good to see you. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are yeah, you? Good to see you. Good, good. I'm a little raspy. Um, I was showing uh, houses last week and there was a house with some cats. So I had an allergic reaction. So that's why I sound a little bit raspy like this. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and today's a snow day. So no showing houses with cats today. Oh boy, no kidding. As wow. as realtors, Terry, we we just we just are here to serve. We'll rain, shine, mm -hmm. snow. It's snowing everywhere in the country. We'll talk about mm -hmm. your weather in a little bit, Haley. But uh, mm -hmm. even with the raspy voice, she's a trooper and she's here. Terry, why don't you tell a little bit about history? I know she's one of your favorites, so go ahead and share. Yeah, Haley was one of the first uh, realtor partners that we ever had. Uh, I think, in fact, uh, in fact, I know where it was. It was right before COVID. In uh, Nashville, yeah. Haley and uh, Bart came up to me and we started talking and I said, hey, I've got these groups and I don't know if anything has come of it, but people keep asking for realtors in Knoxville. And man, she stepped right into it. Uh, I think it was the day or two later, showed me all around Knoxville, which yeah. I got to tell you, I loved Knoxville. What a great town, a, a university town, um, you know, with great uh, you know, just uh, uh, anything you'd want. If you want lakefront property, you can have lakefront property. Uh, if you want, uh, you know, downtown vibes, it, anyway, it, it's just a great town. And I'm still very appreciative three years later, at least, maybe even closer to four, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. that uh, Haley uh, showed me around. In fact, it will be four years this year. My gosh, time flies. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Haley, thanks for all you've done in the groups. I know you've helped a ton of people move from California to the Knoxville area, and that's yeah. still continuing. Um, so um, just uh, grateful for you and, and all that you've done for the groups. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, meeting you is, uh, was definitely a game changer for me in real estate. So I'm always appreciative to have met you and, you know, I really feel like God put you in our in my path at least, you know, and, and line that up. And we, we had a really good time when you came to Knoxville and drove around and I got to share a lot about why I love East Tennessee. And uh, I think that that's definitely translated to the group. Um, a lot of people are interested in Tennessee and I have been able to help a lot of people um, move from California to this area. And, and interestingly enough, um, I've, I've become really good friends with a lot of these people too. So it's been a blessing in my life, just the friendships that I've made. I just got back last night from Charlotte, North Carolina, um, with one of my best friends now who came from the group that oh, I sold a awesome. house to. And I go every year to this cheer competition with her and her daughter. And uh, just a great time. So that's where I've been all weekend. We got back right before the snow hit because mm -hmm. we probably got about five or six inches today. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um yeah, but it's so good um, to be part of the group and to help all these families um, that are making such a huge life-changing exactly. decision. Um, so thank you. So uh, I, I don't mean to throw you guys off a little. I know you guys know I'm from Vegas, but I did live in the Woodlands, Texas. So I do have a little stint in Houston and Houston won over the weekend. So I can't be a Raiders fan. I'll be a Houston Texans fan. So that's why I have my Texans stuff. But let's go ahead and dive in, Haley. And there are a ton of people that are moving to Tennessee. So let's get started with that. Maybe you could share a little bit what, you know, your geographical area. And why do you think that so many people are choosing not just Knoxville, but choosing the state of Tennessee? And uh, let's dive into that. Go ahead. Take it away, Haley. Okay. Well, we won't hate you too much, David, for wearing that sweatshirt because... <laughs> But the Titans used to be the Houston Oilers, but now, you know, they are the Tennessee Titans. So there's a small connection there. So we will let it pass for today. Um, I think that, you know, people are choosing, obviously, I, I believe, to move to states where they have more freedom, 
Um, certainly Tennessee is is bright red. Um, and I think a lot of people just want to be able to, to raise their family the way they choose in their homes, whatever that might be, uh, without somebody telling them you have to do this or that. I also think, you know, Tennessee is very uh, friendly state as far as taxes go. We don't have a state income tax. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're comparing Tennessee to other states with no income tax, let's say Texas, for example, since you're wearing that shirt, um, <laughs> our property taxes are quite a bit lower um, yes, than, yes. than the state of Texas. So, um, and then, you you know, you know, we have all four seasons. Our weather is it's very nice. You know, today I'm, I'm telling you we're having a snow day and my, my kids are running in and out, in and out, trying to soak up as much of it as they can because they know this may be the only snow day they get. Mm-hmm. We, we usually don't get m- many more than just a few snow days and it's usually melted by the next day, but I think it's going to be quite, quite cold here for the next couple of days. So I might linger, um, but we do have all four seasons. It's beautiful. And um, actually we are in Knoxville in particular, we're a day's drive from half the United States. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's something people don't really realize. But when you say that and they think about it, oh, my goodness, yes, you are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can hop in your car and do a, a day trip to half, half of the United States right from Knoxville. Right. Wow. You know, um, Haley, um, we, we've we had on the last several podcasts and there's been we've done. I don't know if we're up to like 25 or 30 different podcasts, but. Uh, one of the big topics that we we've been hearing a lot is that your clients are making these decisions based on the kids. <clears throat> They're making decisions mm-hmm. saying, I don't want to raise my kids in California because of all the problems. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you work with a lot. Have you been hearing that same story that your clients are saying they don't want to keep their kid, raise their kids in California? Oh, absolutely. I would say, especially during the COVID situation, that was probably the top reason. Um, and, and I think that really just shined a huge light on the control that's going on in that state. Um, and it was kind of the last straw, but it, it put a huge spotlight on the problem that was already there. Um, and I was actually having this conversation with my friend on the way back yesterday who moved from California and they moved because of their children. And I asked her if she was happy with the decision and all of that. And of course she is. And but she still misses family and friends back in California. But she said something that was interesting to me. Um, and we all want to see things with rose, rose colored glasses on. I understand that. And Tennessee is far better. Um, than what they're experiencing in California. But at a certain point, it'll catch up with all of us, you know. Yeah. But the decision in her mind was she left this beautiful state and all her friends and family, and there's things she really loves about California, but she wanted to get ahead of that. And she wanted to be able to raise her children without those influences that she didn't necessarily agree with. Um, so even though she knows at some point it will make its way here, um, but she's given the opportunity to influence her children's minds and and, and shape them the way and give instilling them the values that she has instead sure. of outside forces. And and so if we talked about your geographical area, I, I've been to Tennessee a few times, but it was when I was a kid. It was a long time ago. I don't know that I've ever been to Knoxville. So if we could talk about the area, the communities that you serve and in, in, in where that is geographically. And mm-hmm. also one of the topics we always like to talk about is education. So maybe mm-hmm. we have, that's on my list today of finding out what's education like for our members in California that are thinking about Tennessee and your geographical area. Sure. So when you think about the state of Tennessee as a whole, um, we are divided into three different sections. We have West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and East Tennessee. If you look at the state flag of Tennessee, you'll see three stars. And those three stars represent each um, each section of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Knoxville is in East Tennessee. It um, is the largest city in, in East Tennessee. Um, where I, the, the areas that I, I service and that I serve um, is probably a 
Well, first of all, Knoxville is very large landmass wise. I mean, people can get on Zillow and see houses and know that's Knoxville, but they don't know where Knoxville it is because that could be, you know, right. 45 minutes from West Knoxville or Farragut, which is usually where people really want to be because of the schools. Um, and I can I can go and talk about that. But I serve um, Maryville, which I know a lot of people talk about Maryville, Oak Ridge, um, the North Knoxville area, South Knoxville, um, Seymour, um, and, and parts of Sevier County, but not a whole lot. I, I really try to stay in areas that, that I know what I'm talking about, right. um, because if I go too far out, I don't serve my clients well. Um, mm -hmm. So I always refer them to other partners within the Leaving California group who are fantastic, by the way. Um, and, and we all try to really work together to make sure that these clients in these groups are well uh, taken care of, whether mm -hmm. it's with me or somebody else. I mean, I don't go outside of where I feel comfortable. Sure, of course. Um, and it, yeah, as far as schools go, I mean, uh, West Knoxville, Farragut in particular, which is what a lot of people talk about, has some of the top rated schools in the state of Tennessee. I see. And then, Terry, you have history here, so maybe you're better off to ask questions about the ge geographical parts. Um, are you familiar with some of these areas she's talking about? Sure. And then, uh, and Haley, if you can talk about, I think there's one university in uh, Knoxville that might be of note uh, that you could talk about, too. Yeah, the University of Tennessee. Go Vols. Um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right here um, in downtown Knoxville. It's a great university growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, it's just busting at the seams. Um, and it, it obviously very thriving as far as athletics go. And, you know, when Tennessee's doing well, more and more students want to go there. But um, great, great campus culture as well. That's great. Uh, can you, uh, now what I tell you, you showed me all around the whole Knoxville area, but one place that really impressed me that might uh, be of interest to people in the groups is Teleco Village. Can you mm -hmm. speak to the whole Teleco Village, uh, why it's there, and and some overview of that area? Yep. Um, Teleco Village is um, right outside of Knoxville in Loudoun County. It's uh, if, if people are interested in Knoxville and they've done even five minutes worth of research, they're going to hear the name Turkey Creek, and that's where our main shopping is in West Knoxville. Um, but Teleco Village, <laughs> excuse me, it's about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes uh, to Turkey Creek. So it's not very far. It's right on um, Teleco Lake. So it's right on the water. It's got beautiful golf courses. And what it is, it's, it's, it's a retirement community, but don't think about old people being pushed around in wheelchairs or anything like that. It's a very active retirement community. And a lot of young retirees uh, live there. Um, it, it's pretty large and um, people really love it. Um, it's a very involved community. There's two wellness centers with indoor pools, recreational facilities. Um, if you like pickleball, you'll love Telego Village. They take it very seriously, their pickleball. Um, and then, of course, the lake is beautiful. There's several marinas and the golf courses, too. Um, mm -hmm. The golf courses are so great that you have people that'll buy property in Teleco Village and never build a house on it, and they pay the dues just so they can golf at the golf courses. Um, and there's hundreds of clubs at, at Teleco Village, so whether you're into, you know, coin collecting or gardening, there's a club for you. I mean, it's there. And so you, a lot of people that have moved from outside of the state um, move there and get involved very quickly and develop friends and meaningful relationships. Cause I know that is important to people moving right. to a new place and leaving these relationships that they have. And am I going to be able to meet new friends and, sure. and things like that? And certainly you'll, you'll be able to do that very quickly in a place like Teleco village. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then you have other, uh, you have other waterfront, uh, other uh, TVA, uh, Tennessee Valley Authority uh, reservoirs in the area too uh, that you could speak to that too please yeah we've got several lakes in the Knoxville area all of them are part of the Tennessee uh, River Valley or the Tennessee River system um, meaning that 
some way, and I don't know how because I've never tried it, but I've been told, and I believe these people, um, you can get all the way to the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> through these locks. Mm. Uh, yeah, wow. so we're part of the Tennessee River system. Um, some of the bigger lakes uh, that people really like to live on would be uh, Fort Loudon Lake, and that would be like out in Farragut, the lakefront properties out there. It's going to be really hard probably um, on Fort Loudon Lake and in that area to get a house on the lake for well anything under one million and, and mm -hmm. it would probably be pretty hard even at that one million mark it's, it used to be that way um, but it's probably a million and a half at least to be on the water on Fort Loud and in that area um, and then you got and you got Teleco Lake, Watts Bar Lake so a lot of people and um, if you want to be out kind of further out on the outskirts <clears throat> Watts Bar Lake is a nice lake to be on um, in the 10 mile area, you'll see a lot of uh, lakefront properties and get a better bang for your buck out in these areas. You know, you're talking about all the stuff to do and my goodness, uh, it sounds like there's a ton of fun stuff to do. So besides the lakes, if somebody doesn't know much about your area in Tennessee, can you give us like the top four or five things that people love to do besides pickleball? Um, uh, what else? What And going on the lake, what are some other things that somebody would have to look forward to in your in your area? Right. Well, besides pickleball going on the lake and tailgating for the balls, um, probably the well, the number one thing would be the Great Smoky Mountains. I mean, we're we're right here at the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains, and you really cannot beat it. It is the number one visited um national park in the country. Wow. And it is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um We've got Dollywood right there in Sevierville as well. So, and Dolly is an icon in these parts. Uh, I heard Del she's not doing well. Did you hear uh, that? I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, I heard she, hear they that. said that she's not making any more public appearances. Yeah, I just yeah. read that yesterday that she's not doing well. So. Oh my goodness. Well, she went out with a bang as a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> she looked great. Um, yeah, she, and, and, yeah. and Haley, you know what? You talked about the weather. So let's dive back into the weather because a lot of people, when they're thinking about a community, weather is really high on their mm -hmm. list. And you're mm -hmm. saying that you're having a snow day, but it may be the only one. So let's talk about the different seasons and the weather where you're at. Yeah. So I get a lot of questions about the weather. Of course, Tennessee's been in the news quite a bit recently for some pretty uh, large torna tornadoes. Um, and I know people coming from California that that as far as weather is concerned, that is probably their biggest uh, fear. Um, I want to say, you know, with a disclaimer, I'm not saying things can never happen here because certainly they can and they will because, you know, I'll be made out to be a liar. But I just want disclaimer. I'm not saying never. But, you know, for the most part, the Knoxville area is protected from those larger tornadoes. Um, because we're we're in a basin, we're protected by the mountains. So you know, w severe weather doesn't really have time to build up steam because there's not enough flat land to to make it large. Um, so once you hit the Cumberland Plateau, which is right after Cookville, um, about the Crossville area, you're going to hit that Cumberland Plateau. And when weather moves across the state, when it hits that, it slows it down dramatically, mm -hmm. um, and and weakens storms. So we're not going to have big F5 tornadoes like you sure. would in Middle Tennessee. And I'm originally from the Cookville area. So I, I do know about those things and I was traumatized as a child by it. So mm. um, we're not going to experience the severe weather like other parts of the state would. And like I said, we have all four seasons. Our winters are not that long. They're very mild. Mm. Um, you're not going to get snowed in your house. Right. Um, right. My, not from California, but I do have clients that move from the Northeast. You know, do I need to bring my snowblower? No, you don't. Certainly no need for that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know many people that have snow shovels. That's not a thing here. Um, and then our summers are very, very nice. Um, people always worry, is it, does it get really, really hot there? Uh, yeah, there's a time where it does get really, really hot and muggy. Not Florida muggy, but you may have a week where it's it's very hot and muggy and pretty humid. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, after about a week or two, that, that usually settles down. Um, but we have really nice seasons here. And yeah. springs are beautiful. And, and the thing that people come here for in the fall 
is the turning of the leaves in the Great Smoky Mountains um, and beautiful. the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, so our falls are just stellar. There, people travel to come here to see it. So we're really blessed. So Terry, you spoke very highly. And what was the weather like? And when were you there? And uh, share a little more about <laughs> Knoxville, Terry. I think it was uh, March 2020, and uh, it was beautiful. Um, yeah, very comfortable. Uh, and I'll I'll go along with that. I, I mean, if, if everybody's scared to death of Florida humidity, which I got to tell you, late June <clears throat> through August, when you wake up, it's going to be hot and it's going to be humid. But mm -hmm. in, uh, in eastern Tennessee, uh, you get much more milder climate. You may get a week or two, as Haley said, of, of, of heat and humidity, but generally it'll it'll cool down and... Uh, so it's a little more comfortable, but, um, but also I don't have to worry about snow here in central Florida. So, and can you speak to yeah. that Haley? Is it like Dallas in Knoxville? Like when you get four inches of snow, they don't even bother plowing or anything. They just wait until it melts. Is that, does it work? Oh, yeah, we, we don't plow it here. Okay. We, saw, we, we saw the roads and uh, people wiped the Costco out the day before. I already couldn't even get into the Costco parking lot yesterday. I sent Bart <laughs> to the store for some bread. And to be honest, my Coke Zero habit, I was like, I'm not getting snowed in without Coke Zero. <laughs> Run. <laughs> um, but he could barely get through the store. But, you know, that's the thing. People go get stock up for their three days and they don't leave the house. But we don't, you know. I don't think they snow plow. We may have a few trucks that'll do the main roads to make sure, you know, emergency vehicles can get through, but they're not going to go snow the back roads or neighborhoods. So people just hunker down um, and wait for it to melt. And generally it melts um, within a day or two. And it's funny because in in East Tennessee, we can have all four seasons in one day. I've seen it happen. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Where you wake up and you're in shorts and, and then it's snowing by the evening. So mm, that's, crazy. that's certainly a thing that happens here too. So Haley, you talked about the uh, going to Costco yesterday. So that's another thing on our list. We usually like to talk about the traffic and getting around and where the regional airport is and, uh, what, what it's like to fly in and out and how, how, how difficult is it to move around? Is it like LA or San Francisco or what's it like there traffic wise? No, but it's starting to get that way. Yeah. At certain times of the day. Um, yeah. But no, our, our traffic's very manageable. Um, I will say we've probably, well, we've definitely grown faster than what I think in infrastructure can keep up with. And there's times of the day that I would avoid certain areas, but, you know, I still have clients come out and I'm like, oh, this traffic, this time of the day. And they're like, what traffic? <laughs> that means it's nothing yeah. to them, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say, you know, like with any place, it can get heavier, but you're not at a standstill for, for an hour or anything like that uh, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And our airport is small. Um, but it's growing. They are um, expanding it. Right now it has 12 gates, but uh, it's it's nice to be able to get in and out very easily. Um, and they've got some some good, you know, round trip destinations out of Knoxville now. And um, usually, you know, if you're, if you're going to fly somewhere, they'll connect you in Charlotte or Atlanta. And, and then you'll be on to your, or, or Washington um, at IED. Uh, and then you'll be on to your final destination. But it's very easy to get in and out of there and, and not too expensive. How far is Charlotte and Atlanta from where you're at? I just came from Charlotte yesterday. That was a four-hour drive. Um, oh, you go through the the mountains through Asheville. It's about four hours. And Atlanta is about four hours as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people fly into those places or yeah. fly out. And then Nashville is about three hours. So if you want to uh, fly into Nashville <clears throat> and drive over, I've had I've had clients not sure exactly where they wanted Tennessee, but they didn't know where. So they reached out to other realtor partners in the groups uh -huh. and made stops. Um, we're going to start in Nashville because that's where we're flying in and rent a car and go to Chattanooga. Yeah. And then they'll end up with me and then maybe over in um, Johnson City with Tina. So that, you know, that's a great way to do it too. If you're still unsure what part of Tennessee you want to settle on, right. um, we're all happy to help you. And you mm -hmm. don't have to hide that from any of us. 
Hmm. You know, I, I, feel, I feel people are a little uncomfortable sure. sharing that they, they don't want to waste my time. And I really hmm. appreciate them saying that, but I do understand that you're not sure. Mm-hmm. And, are, and I, I find my job is to help you decide yes or no, Knoxville, yeah. not to, not in, on your first visit. My job sure. isn't to sell you a house when you come right. out. Right. If you find a house you love and you really, really want, that's great. We'll sell you a house. But mm-hmm. I'm not pushing to sell you a house while you're out here. Mm-hmm. I am driving you around, yes, showing you houses, but trying to show you what your money will get you in each area. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to share things about the area. And does it fit? Is it a good fit for your family? And right. helping you determine those pros and cons. Yeah. And when a family leaves from spending a couple of days with me, if I've helped them decide yes or no, Knoxville, I feel like I've done my job. For sure. And if the answer is yes, then we'll get to work on where you want to be. And generally that trip out, if they do mm-hmm. decide yes, Knoxville, they leave knowing what particular area they want to be in. I want to be in Maribel or I want to be in Farragut. And that really helps narrow things down when you go home and yeah. you're looking you know, at the MLS search, you're like, oh, I know where that one's at. I mm-hmm. remember that. That's yeah. in my area or whatever. So, well, Haley, I know how important your relationship with Terry is. And I know you'll be proud. I came along a couple of years after you gotten started. And every week I always brag about <clears throat> the, the job that Terry's done of selecting realtors like you that are passionate, that somebody doesn't walk off a plane and say hello. And you're like, well, do you want to spend five five hundred thousand or a million? Like you're not even having those conversations in the mm-hmm. beginning. And Terry has done such an amazing job of hiring people like you that are not just salesy, but they're, mm-hmm. they're these people. And I say this every week: these people become our family members. You just said that you made somebody uh, somebody from California became one of your best friends. I mean, mm-hmm. this we we take this very personally, and it's not about mm-hmm. sales; it's about helping people. Um, I think I had one more thing uh, that we always like to talk about it with your community. And Terry, you can help me if I missed anything. But we like to talk about job opportunities and what's going, what does mm-hmm. the job sector look like there? Um, well, I actually just saw this yesterday. I was doing a listing presentation. Um, and sometimes it's, I mean, I know these things, but to go back and look at recent data, our top employer is um, the science and and so the science industry because we have um, Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Y-12 Nuclear Facility, which is right there in Oak Ridge. Um, so that's our, our top m- employer. And then, uh, you know, other other um, businesses that work through those things, right? Other contractors. Um, and then the second uh, top employer is healthcare. Mm-hmm. We have We have, I think, six or seven major healthcare systems right here in Knoxville. Um, so healthcare is a huge employer here. So th- those are our top two. Go ahead, Terry. Um, Haley, you uh, you and I looked at new construction uh, mm-hmm. a decent amount when we were together. Uh, is that continuing? And can you kind of just uh, hit on price ranges? Like if someone's on a, on a serious budget, maybe never owned a home before, what a starter home would be. And then uh, I'm sure you go all the way up from mm-hmm. there. But if you can kind of speak to that a little bit for those who are interested in that. Yeah, um, obviously new construction is still booming here because we still have a housing shortage in, in the area. Um, and it, it is a great bang for your buck. Um, I think everybody I've sold a new construction home to in the last four years has stepped into that home with equity by the time they've closed on it. Wow. Um it's, it's been amazing. And then at this point, of course, they've got tons of equity. So new construction is a great way to go. I've sold a lot of D.R. Horton houses out here. And I know people from California are like, oh, I'm never going to buy D.R. Horton because I know they have a bad reputation um, out in California. Um, and and there's, you know, negative things to say about people find negative things to say about any builder, but for the most part, they've been really good. That's been a really solid choice for people um, that want to get their foot in the door into the Knoxville market and feel like they made a safe choice um, because most all of them go into it with equity and they make quite a bit on the back end. Or if you want to get your foot into the market 
um, by, by one of these new construction homes in the 300,000 range is about where they land, 400. They've gone up a little bit between three and 400. And then you want to use it as a rental um, after you decide, hey, I, now we want to move on to, to our forever home. They make great rentals. They're getting a really good return uh, for people. And I've got quite a few people that do have those as rentals. And, and as far as starter homes for people, if you're not looking at new construction, just maybe resell or new construction, um, it really depends on which area you land in and where you want to be. And the Farragut area is going to be a bit more pricey. I you generally tell people about 20% more um, than other places in Knoxville. And it's it's the most probably the most desirable for most people. Um, and I, the schools are, are all A-rated, so they really want to be here for that. Um, but you can get a, a nice starter home for um, under 300 near that $300,000 range in other places. Wow, that's great. Yeah, we, but we have, I will, I will well, say this, though. Everybody wants uh, acreage from California. <laughs> they want a house in five acres and... They really think they're going to get that for that 300000 Those days aren't really with us anymore. We'd have to really go on the outskirts uh, to find that. But, you know, we can get privacy without acreage if that's the goal. And I think for most people, when you really get down to it, um, the goal is they want privacy and not really acreage. On the um, when you're talking about the uh, the new construction, I know here we have Dr. Horton as well in Las Vegas. They were I was just in one of their townhomes. They were offering fifteen thousand mm -hmm. in seller incentives, and they were offering a six and a half percent rate or five thousand dollars in incentives mm -hmm. and a four and a half percent rate. Are do you have that kind of things going on in your in your market as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do. we do have that. A lot of the new construction they are offering those incentives right now. I mean, like everywhere else in the country, you know, things have kind of slowed down once interest rates started going up and slowed down to to the crazy that it was. It, we're still busy and we're still on multiple offers on things, but it's compared to what we were seeing. Yes, it slowed down. Uh, so those builders are offering some nice incentives now. Um, but it depends on what your situation is as well. You know, just because somebody's offering you um, some closing costs money. We have to look at the whole package, right? Sure. If that's not really something you need, um, it, it could not be the best option for you. But I'll help, you know, I'll help guide you along and put you in touch with the right people to talk to as far as lending goes to help you determine what is the right thing for you. And in a lot of cases, if cash is tight, those incentives are really big. Right, right. And and so every week when we do these podcasts, we're really speaking to the members of Leaving California. And mm -hmm. I know for sure that people, you know, they're, they're either watching it live right now or they're going to be watching it later on. And mm -hmm. so let's just assume we know that we have people that are maybe on the fence or maybe they haven't got a plan or maybe they're not sure. Um, and, and since you've done this longer than me and you have a lot of experience, <laughs> What would you say to the people that are on the fence? They're not really sure what to do. They want to get out of California, but they're scared. It's the biggest decision that they may make in their whole lifetime. So what advice, if you could give some some things that you've done and, and share some some tips, I would really appreciate that. <clears throat> right. Um, well, the number one thing that I would say to do is do your research, which you obviously are. If you're watching a podcast like this or you're watching this on a live, you're already, you know, doing that research, but keep looking. And um, again, Terry's done such a great job of finding agents all around the country that he has vetted. And we are here to help you. Um, we're not here just to make a quick sale. Obviously, I do this to pay the bills. Um, I'm not doing it as a, a charity, but... Um, I do care about people and I want to help people make the best decision for their family. Um, we as real estate agents, the ones that do it full time and, and do it well, we understand that the decisions made through real estate for families can really have generational impacts. And I have seen people come to me um, after the mistakes have been made with other real estate agents who have 
found them because they've asked questions in other groups and they just, you know, they're wanting that low hanging fruit to make yep. a quick sale. And they've yeah. ended up in bad situations where agents have sold them home sight and seen and it smells like cat urine in it or, yeah. you know, it, I mean, I've seen it all. And then they come to me um, to kind of unwind yeah. the damage. And a lot of times that damage, I can't unwind it. Um, it's hard and it, it'll have generational impact. So sure. I, you know, I encourage you to lean on the agents in the group um, to help you determine where you want to be. I don't think any of us are looking for a quick sale. No. We want to help families determine what parts of the country would be a great place for them to move. That's the first thing. And I, I find that my job. Yes. Uh, it's, it's easy to sell a house. I mean, I don't sell houses. I open doors. Um, but I help families determine what the best decision is for them and try to guide them through that process. So, you know, even if you don't like me, you may find me annoying. My voice is annoying. They today. don't like you. Stop it. <laughs> if, no you don't wanna, I, I if you imagine. don't want to, if you don't want to use if you don't want to use me, though, find an experienced agent to help you in your journey because it really does matter. We had a conversation with another agent that we were talking to, and um, we, we have really kind of slowed down letting other agents come into the groups. But one of them was reaching out to us, and we had this conversation with our last meeting, and I found it really interesting. There's 1.6 million realtors in the United States but less than 1% of those realtors really specialize and probably way less than 1% of them specialize in people leaving California and going to a new city like you and I do. Um, and we hear these stories all the time about, well, my cousin's brother's mom's sister is a realtor and I think I'm mm -hmm. probably going to use her. She has no experience on leaving California or selling her house in California and where to go and um, and one of the things that we were talking about was really interesting to me, and I hadn't really thought a lot about it, but the closing on a house, some states, you can just get the keys right there at, at signing. Some states, you have mm -hmm. to wait three days. There's all different kinds of things. And the, mm -hmm. and the thing that's so cool about this group is that Terry's put together all of these professional realtors that can mm -hmm. help you through that process. And they have mm -hmm. the right lenders. They have the right realtors. And then Terry... We talk a lot about horror stories of, of moving moving companies and using brokers. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I mean, just horror stories for these poor mm -hmm. people. And they have generational impact on them. Like you said, it's mm -hmm. so true. Um, I know we're, man, I could talk to you forever, Haley. <laughs> amazing. Uh, one of the things that I always like to ask in our, in our podcast is, and I think I already know who it is, but uh, if you could share a couple, maybe one or two of your favorite stories about helping families and you know, they were really scared and then they ended up coming and I, they came out three times and then we bought a house. Do you have any favorite stories that really stand out? Uh, I've, I've helped so many people move. Um, but, well, yeah, for example, I will talk about my friend Michelle again, because she, her story really does stand out to me. And I was unloading um, luggage last night in her house. And I really haven't been in her house, believe it or not. She always comes to my house. Um, I haven't been in her house very much. And I was like, oh, was that, was that here? And when I showed, he was like, yeah, yeah. I remember on the video where uh -huh. the, where the service was bad. And, yeah. and she was telling me the story is even crazier. I'll tell you. Um, I met Michelle through the group. And we had talked on the phone a few times and they're from Folsom and uh, she wanted to move out here for her family, um, but she couldn't get out here to view the houses and her mom and dad live in Virginia. So they drove over for the day uh, to drive around with me to be Michelle's eyes. And I took her mom and dad out for a whole day and we looked at houses. And during that time, my husband and I were building our um, wine bar. We have a restaurant in uh, Farragut, mm -hmm. and we were kind of in the process of creating our menu and our wine list. And by the end of the day, I said, well, I got to go to my house. I have some wine brokers there. We're going to do a wine tasting. Y'all don't want to come. <laughs> they ended up staying in my house till 1030 that night 
wow. you know, having wine with me. I've got a picture of them at my dining room table uh, that night. It's the first day I'd ever met them. Um, and just, I love her family. And then ended up um, video showing Michelle a ton of houses, at, you know, just not the right fit, not the right fit. And then one came on, she's like, can you go video this house for me right now? Because things were going like, within hours at that yeah. point like yeah. fifty thousand over ass crazy stuff and i went and my cell phone service wasn't that good and i was trying to facetime her and she finally just hung the facetime up and called me she goes is it good do you like it will it work and i never even met her mm. face to face before she's like should i put an offer yeah and she's like scott's at the gym i can't get a hold of him okay just do it mm. so she ended up they ended up putting an offer in on this house I haven't not even seen it on video because my internet connection was so bad. And mm. uh, she ne they never even physically saw this house until after they had closed on it. And she was saying last night, like, we look around and we're like, oh, my God, we ended up mm. in the best place. There's not another house I would have picked. Um, it's the best location for our family. And uh, just, yeah, that's a great story. But I've had several clients like that, very similar stories you know, selling them houses they hadn't even seen until after they had closed on it. And I hide keys or leave a lock box and they get mm. there not to their house they've never even seen before. So Haley, I'm going to, I've never said this before. This will be a first and this will be the podcast that I will refer to a lot of people. I'd like for people to watch this one first. And here's why. And when you said, oh, well, if they don't like me, they can go find somebody else. I can't imagine anybody ever saying, no, I don't want her. <laughs> I, I don't like her. <laughs> But this is exactly what we're talking about week after week. You can feel it. I feel it. I feel the energy. She's not just telling me how she made a sale. She's telling me how she made a best friend. She's emotional about it. She's passionate about it. You will feel that. So when you are trying to find your realtor, you're going to know they're right. They're salesy. Like, what do you want to buy? What do you want? What, do you, do you mm -hmm. have a pre, pre qual letter? Where's your pre qual letter? Like mm -hmm. they're not even having that conversation. So you feel it. It's from the heart. And nobody, unfortunately, is born with it. I mean, this isn't something that we can teach ourselves how to have. You either have it, you care, you're compassionate, and you want to help people like me, you and Terry do ever, all the time. So this is my, uh, mm -hmm. this is what I'm saying. I've never said this before. Yeah. If you're looking for a realtor, you need to find somebody like Haley that's passionate. You can just feel it. You know that she cares. Some realtors, they don't care. They're just like, I need to make this sale. And then I got to go make another one tomorrow. So I'm giving you my full endorsement and I love your passion. I love your oh, energy. I'm you. super excited. Terry, what am I missing? Go ahead. Well, I think you nailed it, David. Haley's uh, become a good friend and I'm, I, um, I just love having her in the groups and she's helped so many people in our group move from California to the Knoxville area. And I would highly recommend uh, anyone who's interested in, in just having a conversation with her, and Haley, we'd love to get your contact information if you could give us that um, over the Zoom so that people can uh, refer to it. But uh, yeah, it's just been great having you and and you've become a friend of mine and uh, we've been through a lot together and uh, I just appreciate so much uh, uh, having you in the group. Oh, thank you so much, Terry. And, and thank you, David. You guys are great and uh, very nice things to say. Um, but yeah, if, if people want to reach out and maybe you just have questions or you just want somebody to talk to about some hesitations or, or fears you may be having. I mean, you can call me, text me. My cell phone number is 865-320-5618. And that is probably the best way to contact me, to be honest. Um, but if you do want to send me an email, it's Haley, H-A-L-E-Y, at vanedomgroup.com and that's v-a-n-e-d-o-m group.com and uh Haley in closing is there anything else that you want to say or something that because I, I I feel like I've been leading the whole thing and we do these every week but if there was something that you wanted to say or convey to anybody in the group or to Terry or anything at all that you want to say in closing please feel free to do so Oh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for having me on here and thank you to the members of the group who have reached out and trusted me to help them make these um, decisions and 
honestly allowed me to be a part of their life. It's been such a great blessing. And I really do look forward to meeting more people and helping more people um, on their journey and hopefully turning you into a huge ball fan. <laughs> Jerry, anything in closing? No, it's, uh, I think we've uh, we've covered it all. But uh, thanks again, Haley, and uh, and the best for your voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. So thank, you. Thank, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And for those of you that watch this in the coming weeks, this is going to be a great podcast. It's a great resource. It talks all about Knoxville. And it even shares some tips on how to get out of California and make the greatest escape of your life. So thanks you all, thank you all for listening. And we will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.